Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you had an awesome Sunday. It was kind of dreary this morning, but the sun came out this afternoon and it warmed up. So it was a nice day. My day started early this morning because I just woke up thinking about human trafficking. And so I wanted to give you some stats on that because I want to talk to you about, um, I can't remember what I titled this because uh, I changed it. So hang on a second. Let me look it up. Let me look it up real quick. Sorry about that. I just went blank. Because uh, I changed it. Be set free from the bondage of sin. <laughs> Be set free from bondage of sin. Okay. That is what I titled it. So, I wanted to talk to you about that too. But I wanted to talk to you about bondage of human trafficking bondage too. So, I got some Texas statistics that I want to go over a little bit and just talk a little bit about it. I don't have anything written down. It's just going to be off my heart, I guess. Uh, i got to get my camera back. Okay, there we go. Now my camera's back. Now I've got... Um, Uh-oh, what happened there? Oh, it got smaller. I guess that's okay. I guess that might work better. Oh, let me move it over a little bit more. Because I'll use that in a minute. But let's jump into prayer. Um, I need to get with my friend Josie. I'm worried about her. I haven't heard anything from her. I'm going to call her tonight. If she doesn't show up here, I'm going to call her tonight and see if she's better. She wasn't at church, I don't think. I sit in the front, so I have a hard time keeping up with who's at church and who's not. And um, so anyway, let's jump into prayer. Like I said, I hope you had a wonderful day. Tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow is the 15th of March already. This, this year... It's like so fast, so fast. I can't keep up. God, we just come to you, God, and we are so thankful. We're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful that we can be set free from the bondage of sin. We don't have to stay in our sin, that we can be set free. And God, we pray for these children, these young adults, these teens, really all ages, God, that cannot are stuck they're stuck in the bondage somebody else's bondage um, in many ways of just evil pure evil God we just pray we just pray God that um, we pray for their freedom we're gonna pray until they're free we're gonna pray until the people that are breaking laws are in jail God because we trust you and we know, we know, God, that you have people out there that um, are looking for these children, are looking for these teens, are looking for these young adults, are looking for these adults, God. They're looking for them and they are out to rescue them. God, we just pray. We pray for the lost, God. The lost is in bondage to sin, God, in many, in many ways, or sometimes they just don't know. They don't know about Jesus. They haven't been taught about Jesus. So, God, I just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow them to be drawn to Jesus so they can be saved, so they can experience um, the amazing grace that Jesus has to offer. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that uh, you would 
that they would repent and that they would be drawn back to you, God, that they would um, return and that you would restore their relationship as new as if they never left. Only you can do that, God. You are the God of the impossible. We thank you, God, because you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our healer, and you are our shelter in the storm, God. God, you are the righteous judge that will come and judge all the unrighteous. And, uh, but God, you are also kind and compassionate and loving and long-suffering, God, towards us. Even when we are in sin, God, you are patient towards us. God, we just pray. We pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. We just pray that these people would be drawn to you. And we just pray, God, that um, we just pray that you would meet their needs, God, that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus, and they would see the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray for all these that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that they would feel your presence. I pray for my friend Josie. I pray for her sister. And I pray for her co-worker, God. I pray for healing for them. If there's anybody else that I don't know that is sick, God, I just pray for healing for them. And I also praise you that um, the baby that has been sick was able to come home today, meet her grandparents, and be able to come to her house and leave the NICU. And we thank you for that. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So let's get into some of these statistics about, and this is Texas. This is Texas statistics. Some of these are United States. But what really, and this was done last year. This was done last year, probably maybe based on 2019 numbers, but it was done at the end of last year. So actually, I think it's probably pretty accurate. So it says approximately 79,000 minors and youth are victims of sex trafficking in Texas. 79,000, that is a lot. That is 79,000 missing children just in Texas alone. Approximately 234,000 workers are victims of labor trafficking because that is another way that they traffic people is with labor. They make them do jobs uh, for very little pay. And a lot of times with the children, they sex traffic them and uh, labor traffic them also. So, um, there are currently an estimated 313,000 victims of human trafficking in Texas. So that includes the workers and that includes the sex trafficking that goes on with the children, with the minors and youth. That's like minor children. Some of them very young. It's very disgusting. It woke me up this morning just thinking about how disgusting this is and how this shouldn't even be a thing. But with the level of evil that we have right now, it is a thing. And it's a growing thing. And so... Um, So the exploit from victims of labor trafficking in Texas is $600 million. That is what they make from the labor trafficking that they do with the 234,000 workers that they have. They make $600 million. So the minor and youth sex trafficking costs the state of Texas approximately 6.6 .6 billion dollars so 
So this is a very lucrative industry and that's why it is it doesn't go away because many people are involved. There is much corruption in this. There are many payoffs. There are many people that just look the other way and take money and just in our judicial system, some in our law enforcement, there are some law enforcement that are awesome. They are on the front line. They are trying to find these kids. They are trying to put these people in jail. But there are many, too, that are taking the proceeds that come from this. And so with our little crisis at the border, and it is a crisis when you have thousands of unaccompanied minors coming over your border every day probably going right into this system right into this system they say they're going to an aunt or an uncle but if the drug cartel are the ones that have brought them over then they're going into trafficking either labor wise or sex wise if they're kids and that that is what woke me up this morning because that's bondage. That is bondage. And the people that do this, their bondage is to sin. Because they're stuck in sin. They're stuck. They're stuck. Can God forgive them? Yes, God can forgive them. Most of them would rather have the money, though, than the forgiveness. Because they think the money is better than the forgiveness. Okay, well, let's Let's go along with some more stats. The U.S. Department of State estimates that 14,500 to 17,500 people are trafficked into the United States each year. However, these numbers do not include the many individuals trafficked within U.S. borders. So, there are kids uh, teens, adults that are trafficked within our borders too. Like from state to state. And, you know, according to the National Human Trafficking Hotline data, Texas had the second highest number of human trafficking cases in America in 2019 with 1,080 reported cases. That's just, that's disgusting but they were reported so that's that's a you know at least people care enough to report it but the fact that they have to report it that's what disgusts me uh, the most human trafficking cases have been reported in california texas and florida according to the hotline these states have the highest populations in the US which can expl explain why their numbers of cases are significantly higher than other states as well as very high immigrant populations. Nevada, Nevada has the highest rates of human trafficking according to the data and um, probably around Las Vegas. Their data is based on the contacts, phone calls, texts, online chats, emails, and web forms received by the NHTH that reference Texas. Within the 1,080 cases, 261 were minors. The data showed that 805 of the reported total cases involved sex trafficking and 111 involved labor trafficking. Trafficking situations learned about through the trafficking hotline likely represent only a small subset, subset of actual trafficking occurring in the United States. That's what I'm thinking as I read this. I'm thinking, well, for what was reported, there's probably at least half or more that was not reported. That couldn't be reported because these these children, these teens, these young adults, they're in prison. They are they are not free. They're not free to do what they want to do. They are 
in prison to whoever owns them. Um, during the 2006 Department of Justice National Conference, Texas Interstate 1 to 10 was identified as one, oh, I-10, was identified as one of the main routes for human traffickers, with El Paso and Houston identified as major human trafficking centers. Central Texas location on the I-35, I-35 is not far from here, people. It's Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way to Houston, um, through Waco, too. Also gives perpetrators easy access to both Dallas and Houston, which are rated two of the top estimated trafficking cities. So how has the pandemic affected human trafficking? Earlier this year, Polaris re released a report after carefully tracking the potential impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on victims and survivors of sex and labor trafficking. An analysis by Polaris comparing hotline activity in three periods in 2019 and 2020 indicates the number of crisis trafficking situations has worsened by 40% because people are at home. They're online. They're, you know, it's where a lot of this stuff is done online. A lot of it is done online and through social media, even Facebook. A lot of it is done on Craigslist. There is a dark web where a lot of it is done. Um, just really, I'm just really trying to shine the light on this. And there is a, this is the anti-trafficking hotline, which is available 24-7. And it is 888-373-7888. And then you can send a text message, text help to be free. So if anybody comes across this and you are stuck in human trafficking know that you are loved and you are cared for and that God loves you and the things that you've done do not have to define you you can put that in your past and move forward with Jesus he is ready waiting and able with his arms wide open. If you feel like no one loves you, Jesus does. He loves you. God loves you. You are his child. Okay, and so this is my source. I did not make this up. I looked this up. This is by Talia Briones, and this was on... Um, 25 ABC Central Texas. It says reported cases of human trafficking on the rise during a pandemic and that is what I am hearing too is that the traffickers are home, the perpetrators are home, the kids are home and a lot of the parents are at work and they don't know what's going on so please be aware please do not let your children talk to anyone online or social media that you don't physically know who they are that you can't say yes I know who that is that is so-and-so's son or that is so-and-so's daughter that lives in our town they go to our school do not let them talk to strangers because they are not usually who they say they are and anybody can do a fake profile anybody can and it's done all the time and these these perpetrators to our children and our teens they are they are looking for a special type of child or teen that is not happy at home and they're going to promise them everything that they've ever wanted and usually it is I can set you up to be a model or I can set you up to be a singer you know and it's boys and girls too. It's it's both. It's both. 
So, okay, I really did not want to spend this much time on that, but I think that God wanted me to. And so I have been making um, awareness bracelets. And this isn't the final. This is PF Freedom. Hashtag pray for freedom. Because I feel like prayer is one of our best resources in this. And so I made me one that says, pray, pray, the number four, freedom. And I think this is going to be my design um, on here. I like these little bands like this. I wear them a lot. And I did the pink and blue because this affects boys and girls. And it's just to make people aware. And so if you want one, comment. I'll send you one. I went and bought some padded envelopes. I don't care. I'll send it to you for free. If you will partner with me in prayer about this, then I will send it to you for free. Uh, I have the stuff. I enjoy doing that. I learned how to do this during COVID. I learned how to do bracelets. Actually, I was I learned, um, I think, a couple of years before. But I really got into it during COVID because there wasn't a whole lot going on. Okay, YouTube people. I know you see the leaves that are like floating around my head. Well, with all the wind here in Texas, we do have leaves floating around our, our heads. And um, spring is coming. I feel like spring is in the air. I'm excited i'm not excited about the allergies never excited about spring allergies but i'm excited about just the green grass and the flowers and all the great things that come with spring okay i did not mean to talk about this to discourage anyone i just feel like people need to be more aware and just if we turn our our backs and pretend that it's not going on it is still going on and people are making millions billions of dollars off of innocent children and it breaks my heart it just really does but something else that breaks my heart too is to see people that are in bondage to sin and I am not sinless I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I am sinless because I'm not I am more aware of uh, the sins that I used to do that I didn't think were that big of a deal. Um, I've come a long way in nearly 30 years, but um, I will never be perfect, and I will mess up from time to time. But I have a risen Savior, and He will forgive me. So don't ever think that you are not worthy to come to Jesus and be forgiven of your sins because you are worthy. You are. Okay. So let's start with Leviticus. Let's do our scripture. I gotta find it. I'm kind of sleepy. I woke up early this morning. I started to write a lesson, but I just I just made coffee instead. Did my quiet time before I went to church. Oh, I know where Leviticus is because we talked about it today. It's way over here. Because it's, it's one of those chapters that you can get bogged down in Leviticus and you can go that's okay. If, if the rest of the Bible is like this, I just don't need to know. But it is, it is important. Every bit of God's Word is important. There are just some parts that are really easier to read and understand than others. Okay, so this is... Hmm, this is kind of long. I don't know if I want to read all 46 verses. All right, well, maybe we need to read all 46 verses. And I got me a cup of water. I 
instead of my big cup, which I love my big cup because I only have to drink two of them a day. But it looks so huge on screen. Okay. So uh, Leviticus 26, 1 through 46. And if some of this does not make sense, this is Old Testament. And this is what God required of the Israelites. Okay? But it is, um, it's for us too. God does not want us to um, make idols and worship idols. He, God wants to be first. God wants to be first in your life. He demands to be first. He is the one true God. He is the only God. He demands to be first. And he deserves to be first in our lives. Oh, I'm boning up. Okay. So ye shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image or stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Now let's stop right there, because making idols, which they would, they would create their own idols, and they would worship them, that is sin. We are not, that's called idolatry, and it is sin. So he is calling them out on sin, but he is telling them that if they will keep his commandments, if they will, um, if they will mind him, <laughs> from a parent's standpoint, if they will give him the reverence that he deserves, and they will do what he is asking them to do, then he will bless them. He will bless them with rain. He will bless them with um, crops. He will br bless them with trees and, you know, fruit from the trees. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid, and I will rid evil beasts out of the land, and neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword, for I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat old, and you shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye should not be their bondmen. Bondage. They, the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt. Slave labor. They were, they were in bondage in Egypt. Probably some of them sexually too. You know, it really doesn't say that in the Bible. But unfortunately, um, Slave labor turns into that too. If people think that they own you, they feel like they can do what they want with you. Okay, but God is not like that. God is going to do good things for us. But we have to reverence Him enough to keep His Word. We, you know, we talked about His Word and how valuable His Word is and why we need to read it every day. Okay. I just thought that was good. That's that's what I call a God thing. That's what I call a God confirmation for me. That I'm on the right path. That I am sharing what He wants me to share. Okay. 
and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning og, I guess, A-G-U-E, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, when I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary to me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary to me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not... I'm sorry, I lost my place. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation. And your enemies which dwell there shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwell upon it, and upon them that are left alive you of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so what he is saying is that he brought them out of a land of bondage. For years, they were in bondage. Probably in bondage because they wouldn't do what he asked them to do in the first place. See, God loves us. But God has a better plan for us than what we can think up on our own. And so when we follow him, 
when we keep his statutes, when we read his word, when we learn from him, things are not going to be perfect because life is not perfect. But you know what? Things are going to be a lot better and we don't go through things alone. And we can be strong and courageous. I've got my Be Strong and Courageous t-shirt on tonight. For the Lord is with you. And that's uh, Joshua 1, 9. It's not on my t-shirt, but I know where it is because this is one of the verses that God sent me last year during COVID is be strong and courageous. Okay, back to our text. So God is an if and then. If you do these things, then I will do these things. But if you do these things, then I will do these things. So, and they shall fall one another as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be, be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths, while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes and yet for all that when they be in the land of their enemies I will not cast them away neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them for I am the Lord their God but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God, and I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai and by the hand of Moses. So this was God talking to Moses, telling Moses what he expected of the Israelites and if they did the blessings that would flow and if they didn't the curses that would flow it's called blessings and curses and so if we do what God asks us to do if we stay out of sin and sin is bondage it is not fun it is bondage it may be fun for a while but sooner or later it's like you're in chains to it it is bondage but Jesus is the way. <clears throat> Jesus is the chain breaker. He is the one that can forgive us. Okay, so Levit Leviticus was a lot. Was a lot. But the things that he was telling them in Leviticus are some of the things that they had done in the past. They had built idols. They had done sacrifices to idols. They had sacrificed their children to idols. But if they will stay with his statutes, if they will walk in his ways, then he is going to bless them. And even in my life, you know, when I'm walking in God's ways, when I'm being obedient to God, everything works so much better. I'm not saying it's perfect, because it's not. Things are not perfect. 
Life is not perfect. We live in a fallen, broken, sinful world and things are never going to be perfect here. The only perfect place is heaven. So heaven is our last destination out of here. But things are doable if we are if we are walking with God, if we are keeping his statutes. He is going to bless us. He's going to bless us sometimes with things that we could never imagine. You know, he just is because he's a good God. Okay, so let's talk about uh, da, da, da. Psalms 46 1. So that was a lot, but that was that was all good and all necessary because God did take them from a land of bondage, gave them freedom. And all he wanted them to do was to do what he was asking them to do, to respect him, to love him, to put him first. He wants to be first. And uh, that's what was going to happen if they didn't. And if you've read the Bible, there are many times that the Israelites strayed away to strange gods in strange lands and worship them the way that they worshiped, which were so wrong. And a lot of that worship that they did with those gods is going on right now. Right now, all over the world. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's going on right now. Okay, Psalms 46, 1. But I may just read all of Psalms. I love Psalms. I love Psalms. Okay, 46 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her that right and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So he is our refuge in time of troubles. So when we are caught in sin, we can go to God. We can. We can go before His throne. We can ask for forgiveness. He is available, and He does care, and He will take care of us. Okay, so um, number three is Proverbs twenty-five twenty-six. I really like to have time to number these, and I apologize for being so late tonight, but I did really good on the time change this morning because, like I said, I got up early thinking about human trafficking and just really kind of being broken hearted about it. But it paid off on getting to church because um, I was already up when my alarm went off. Okay, Proverbs 25:26 says this. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So we need to have some self-control against sin. 
I think that's kind of what it's saying is that um, kind of a description of sin which is bondage and uh, we have to have rule over our own spirit we have to we have to be strong and courageous against sin okay four is Romans 12 I don't have but eight tonight but I want to finish with a story um, in Luke Romans 12 Romans 12 2 I like this verse and this is so true of course all of it is so true Okay. Okay, I'm going to read one into. So Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living, sac a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay, and then it goes on to talk about the many members that we have in our body and the differing gifts and everything. But I think what um, for us to sacrifice sin, do a sacrifice of sin. If there is some sin that you have in your life, ask God to give you the strength to just turn away, to repent. Ask Ask Jesus to forgive you of that. There's all kinds of sins. In God's eyes, all sin is the same. So you think the kid that stole the piece of candy from the store innocently, that's sin. And then you think of the serial killer that murdered about 20 people and covered it up, that's sin too. In God's eyes, those sins are the same. In our eyes, they're not. I think, oh my goodness, that poor kid, you know, took a piece of candy, no big deal. Um, that serial killer, how evil is that? But in God's eyes, it's the same. Sin is sin. So we need to uh, present our bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Okay, um, I like the part about do not and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, four, five, James, James one fourteen. So we're kind of getting into temptation and, um, so we need self-control. We need self-control. We need um, we need to ask for strength to stand up against that. I'm looking for James. Found James. Good. James 1:14 says, "But every man is tempted when he is drawn away." of his own lust in enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it, bring for, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So the wages of sin is death, spiritual death. So we want to be careful with sin. We do not want to be in bondage to sin. It is not 
hell is not a party. It's not going to be a party with your friends. It's going to be separated from the God that created you to have a relationship with Him because He loves you so much. A God that sent His Son to die for you, to die for all of us because He loves you so much. And uh, God wants everyone to be in heaven. God does not want anyone to perish. He does not. These people, these traffickers, God can forgive them. God can give them a new life if that's what they want. They can be out of, they're in sin too. They're in sin too. They can be out of that bondage. I know you think oh, they're disgusting. Well, we're all disgusting with sin. We are. Because all of it disgusts God. There's not any of it that He likes. He doesn't like any of it. So God can forgive anybody. Don't ever think, well, I'm not worthy. I've done this and I've done that and I've didn't, you know. Jesus will forgive you and He will give you a new life. Is it going to be perfect? No, it's not going to be perfect. But you're not going to go through things alone. And you are going to have the Holy Spirit to help you discern. You're going to have the Holy Spirit to give you strength against sin. It's going to be so much better than what you have now. Okay. That was James. So now we're looking for James 4. Four seven. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Okay? So, we have to submit ourselves to God. We have to resist the devil. And he will flee from you. I'll tell you, if you want to get rid of the devil, you just start talking about the blood of Jesus and he's gone. He is gone. Or if, you, if you're having bad thoughts in your mind and you're stuck on some kind of sin, you're in this bondage of sin, turn on praise and worship and start praising and worshiping Jesus and I guarantee you those thoughts are going to go away because they cannot stay present in the praise and worship of Jesus. They can't. They're not holy. And they cannot stay present in that. Okay, so let's go to 1 John. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So we are all sinners. We are all sinners. Some of us are saved sinners, and some of us are not saved sinners. But that doesn't give us the excuse to stay in the bondage of sin. Just because we know we're going to be forgiven, that is no excuse to stay in the bondage of sin. We have to move away. We have to stay close to God. If we submit ourselves to God, then, oh, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Because none of us are perfect. Jesus is the only one that is perfect. None of us are. I'm looking at this add about the the V thing. <laughs> Alright, I can't talk about that on here. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is read this story in Luke about um, where is it? Luke 10 30 through 37.
see where it starts. Okay, it does start in 30. Okay. Okay, and Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. So these people that attacked this man, that's sin. That's sin. They left him for dead. They beat him and left him for dead. That's sin. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He won't have nothing to do with him. Um, but a certain Samaritan, oh wait, I skipped ahead. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. They did not want to help him. You know what? That's sin too. That's the sin of omission, of not doing what you know that God wants you to do. That's sin too. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Like Jesus has compassion on us. He had compassion on him. And went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. So the Samaritan was really given an example of Jesus, how Jesus is compassionate towards us. Now this man, he was wounded. But the Samaritan came along and bound up his wounds and took care of him. And had somebody and paid for somebody else to take care of him. So he is the one that showed mercy. So that's what Jesus does. When we're languishing in a ditch or we're stuck in the miry clay of sin, Jesus reaches his hand down and he pulls us up out of that. He forgives us. He binds our wounds. And he takes care of us. Well, hello. What are you doing in here? I have a child in here. I'm nearly done. Will you go back to the living room? No, he's not going to. Okay, so I wanted to end with that story. Because these thieves, they're sinners. But you know what? Jesus can forgive them. Jesus can and will forgive all sin. And then he will set us free. We will be free without this bondage of sin. And freedom is so much better than bondage. So I think about these, these children that have no way of getting help. And I think about these people that are in forced labor. And it breaks my heart. So I'm going to pray for them. But more than that, I'm going to volunteer for one of these organizations. And I don't know what God's going to bring out of it. He may bring public speaking. He may bring... I can stick things in an envelope and mail them out to people. He may bring... You know, I don't know. But I'm willing. I'm willing. Okay. So let's read what uh, God and I talked about today. 
count that's the 14th. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truth in the gospel of Jesus, a new day to worship and learn with your church family, a new day to spend with your family, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truth in the gospel of Jesus, a new day to worship and learn with my church family, which I really enjoyed church today. Of course, I enjoy it every day. But, um, I don't know, I had a different attitude. Maybe because I got up earlier and I wasn't as cranky. But, I just, I went to Sunday school with my husband and my son. And, uh, it was a, it was a good day. Um... A new day to spend with my family. I'm thankful and grateful for all of my blessings. I am disturbed about missing children this morning, God. I feel helpless, like I can never do enough to wake people up about it. And he said, child, do what you can. Be vocal about it. Share information and try to raise funds. So I'm doing that. I have connected my Facebook to Operation Underground Railroad and I'm doing a fundraiser until April the 9th and the money goes directly to them. I don't have to touch it. And um, I'm praying that it's successful. Uh, many people are just now waking up to these truths. All the many ways that children are manipulated. You know how this has hit close to home for you. I do know how it's hit close to home for me. Um, somebody in my family was talking to a new friend on children's messenger and um, thank goodness the parent caught on before it was too late they were already talking about where they live they were already sending pictures to each other and so in investigation of this person that they were talking to turned out that there was a guy on the on the messenger profile and he was probably in his 20s you know so possibly i don't know it could have been a kid i realize it could have been a kid but it could have been a perpetrator too and you know what that would have broken my heart because I'm so close to this family member. It would have broken my heart. But I'm not going to say who it is because I'm not going to do that. And we have another instance, you know, that happened in our family that could have been so much worse than what it really turned out to be. So we need to be aware. It happens. It happens to famous people. Um, there's a man and like one night him and his wife were in bed his landline phone rang and so he got up and it rang one time and then by the time he got there there wasn't anybody there so he got up and started looking around to see if all of his kids were in bed all of his kids were in bed so then he got his gun and he um, was going through his house and it rang again and his child came around the corner and he said what are you doing up and he said well, I was talking to this guy that I game with you know what he was a perpetrator yeah, I'm not. Hey. and there wasn't a, a full-blown investigation that was done on that and so we don't know who our kids are talking to so please be careful please be careful i don't have to worry about my son he is not going to be talking to anybody that i don't know he's just not he doesn't even talk to me i talk to him all the time he doesn't talk to me do you talk to me can you say hi no he doesn't talk to me anyway okay So he wanted me to, he said, share your experience and I will help your words. I will help get your words out. I will multiply them. 
talk about this tonight. Go attend the fundraiser and see if you can volunteer also. This could be an area where you can volunteer from home. Should be great. Um, child, keep sharing my truths and the gospel of Jesus. Keep moving forward with Jesus. Be strong and courageous until Jesus comes. And I said, thank you, God, for meeting with me today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready to go in an instant. TJ talked about that today. It's going to be in an instant. It's going to be like a lightning flash. It's, it's going to be so fast. Nobody's going to have time to get saved. People must get saved now. Uh, keep losing my place. It will be so wonderful to see you all here again and safe. And I said, Maranatha, God. I'm ready. I'm ready for Jesus to come and get us out of this crazy place. Because it gets crazier and crazier every day. And our laws keep changing. And not in a good way. Not in a, ooh, we're going to have more freedom and less bondage way. More towards bondage. And them telling us exactly what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And that is not the America that I grew up in. And I'm so thankful to be in Texas because we do have more freedom here. God bless Texas. Okay, so I'm going to do a salvation message. Let's do peace. Let's do steps to peace with God. Okay, so step one, God's purpose, peace, and eternal life. God loves you, and he wants you to live in peace with him and receive eternal life. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? Well, I can tell you they're in bondage to sin, or they just don't know. They don't know about the saving grace of Jesus. So the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. Right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go put something on for him. Because he's distracting me. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Come on. Let's go get you something to watch. What yeah. happened to what? What happened to Veggie Tales? Sorry. Uh, he was watching Veggie Tales, but he, he doesn't like that one. Okay, so I'm going to start over. Step one God's purpose, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and He wants you to live in peace with Him and to receive eternal life. Since God planned for us to be at peace with Him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have er eternal life, John 3, 16. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. So step two is our problem, sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey Him. Instead, He gave us a will and freedom. Freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. This side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. 
The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59 2. So step three is God's remedy, which is the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins and completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way and we must make the choice. We do because the rapture is going to happen in that quick so quick like that i'm not real good at snapping my fingers the bible says but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us romans 5 8 salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved acts 4:12 for there is one god and one mediator between god and mankind the man jesus christ jesus 1 timothy 2:5 verily verily very truly i tell you whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. So step four is our response. Receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says... All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name, Acts 10.43. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1.12. So I really like this little diagram. Let me see if I can show it to both of y'all. Okay, kind of, kind of. Okay, so you see Jesus is in the middle. Jesus is the bridge that closes the gap between people and God. So Jesus is the only path to God. And so it says people, and it says anxiety, sin, separation, eternal torment. And then on God's side, it says peace, forgiveness, relationship, eternal life. And it says, are you here? Are you on the people side with anxiety, sin, separation, eternal torment? Or are you on the God side with peace, forgiveness, relationship, and eternal life? And I think we all want to be on the God side. Because the God side comes with the reward of heaven so how to receive Christ number one admit your your need I am a sinner be willing to turn from your sins repent believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave through prayer invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit receive him as your your Savior so this is a prayer, and it is not the prayer that saves you. It is admitting you're a sinner and asking for forgiveness, being willing to turn away from your sin, believing that Jesus died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. And then we believe that Jesus can save us. And we confess him as our savior so this is the prayer i'm gonna leave space so you can uh, repeat it after me 
Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So that was a really short and simple prayer. So God's assurance, His Word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus to come into your life, do you know what He has given you? When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who indwells in every believer. This is called regeneration, or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10:13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8.39 He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5.12-13 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. So if you prayed that prayer and you accepted Jesus, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. It is a kingdom family of many denominations, many churches that follow the teachings of God, that follow Jesus. So every day... Read God's Word. Take some time. Find you a special place to sit with God. Spend some time with God. And read His Word. And I would say start in Matthew. And um, pray. Pray to God every day. Every day pray to God. And praise. Find some praise music. I didn't turn mine on tonight. I don't know what was wrong with me. I guess because I was late. Anyway, I'm still late. I'm like, been on here over an hour. But I feel like God wanted to share those, wanted me to share those things with you about human trafficking. He wanted to share with, wanted me to share with you about the personal things that have happened in our lives. And like lately, what really has brought this to the surface for me is that a couple of Fridays ago, something really weird happened. Um, down the street from my house and just really made me think that could be a human trafficker. I didn't know. Um, but I turned in my information to the law enforcement so I felt better once I did that because then if something happened in our town then they'd at least have a description of the vehicle. I did not get the license plate number. I was not close enough. I don't have x-ray vision. And I wasn't going to get out of my car and go and talk to the guy either because I thought he was kind of creepy. It's kind of creeping me out and kind of scaring me at the same time. It was just me and Seth by ourselves. And so, no. But I, I did watch. I did watch him. Which he probably thought that was kind of creepy. I don't know. Anyway, it happens. Human trafficking happens and can happen so quickly. And so please, please, please be aware. Please don't let your kids talk to people online that they do not know, especially teenagers, because they are very vulnerable and these people will tell them whatever they want to hear. So be aware. Be aware I'm going to a fundraiser on March the 27th. I hope I can volunteer 
in some way. Um, I really want to get busy in this area. I really want to help. Um, I cannot go to Columbia. I cannot go to even other states and take these people down. But I can make people more aware of what is going on. And so I guess that's maybe part of my calling is sharing that information. Okay, well let me give you God's blessing. Oh, and also, this I did not write this. This is a good news tract. Good news tracts. I'm going to try to get me some more tracts. But I really like the good news. I have two of them. I may try to get me some more good news ones. Because I like to send them. Um, if people, if anybody wants a bracelet, put your name, contact me. I'll get your address. I'll get it in the mail. I think I can probably like mail these for a dollar. I think. I don't think I have to go and do a huge mailing thing because we used to mail we used to mail DVDs. So I'm pretty sure I can just throw this in a padded envelope and get it out. Okay. So the promise we mailed DVDs and we just like we knew what they weighed. We put the postage on there. We didn't have to go in and get them weighed. Okay, so the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. Do not be in bondage to sin. Choose freedom with Jesus. Be free with Jesus. Do not stay in it. Do not stay in it. There are no blessings that come with it. I mean, you might get blessings here and there, but you're missing out on a lot of blessings by not being obedient because our blessings are tied to our obedience. I, I see that in my life. When I'm more obedient, I get blessed. When I'm not obedient, sometimes I don't. I miss out on blessings from being obedient. Okay. Um, I'm going to pray. My friend Josie never did make it. I'm going to text her and see how she's feeling. God, we just come to you and I do lift up Josie to you and just pray that you would heal her body and her co-worker and her sister, God. They're all three sick at the same time. We just pray that you would be with them, that you would give them strength and you would heal their bodies, God. Just pray for any other people that are sick, God, that you would heal their bodies also. We pray, God, that you would help us to stay out of the bondage of sin. We pray that you would help us to flee from the temptation of sin. We pray, God, that you would help us to be free uh, by Jesus, by accepting his amazing grace and the forgiveness that he has to offer. God, we know that you know we won't be perfect, but we can try to walk in your ways and to keep your statutes and to keep your commandments, God, and to do what your word tells us to do. We can do that. We can serve you with gladness. That was uh, one of my verses today, to serve you with gladness. We can serve you with gladness, God. I think that's Psalm 100 can serve you with gladness and we can enter your courts with praise God and because you are mighty and powerful and you deserve all the reverence you are the one true God you are the God that is on your throne and in control God you are sovereign over all there is nothing that goes on God that you do not know you know who every one of these human traffickers are you know their hearts. You know their minds, God. You even know whether they would accept salvation through Jesus. Because, God, you know our hearts. You know our minds. You know everyone that you have created. And you know whether they have chosen good things to do or bad things to do. God, please help us to walk with Jesus, to follow closely to Jesus, to have the compassion and the love in the kindness and the humility of Jesus to just help us to want to be in your presence God more and more 
Help us to have the boldness to testify of the things that you've done in our lives and to encourage others, God. To let people know that they do not have to be defined by their sin and their shame, God, that they can reach out. Jesus is already reaching out to them. All they have to do is take his hand, God, and he will pull them out of the miry clay that they're in. And God, we just thank you for sending us Jesus. In the name above all names. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, my Pray and Share Warriors, I have enjoyed our time. It has been, wow, nearly an hour and a half. I'm usually not on this long, but I feel like I laid it all out there. And uh, so please put anything in the comments that you would like. If you think of a scripture that went with the lesson, then put that in there. If you got saved, put your name in there so I can pray for you. Just put your name in there if you just came by and you learned anything so that I can give God the glory um, for bringing you to listen. And I am not this, what I am doing here, what I have been doing since last March, nearly a whole year, is not my comfort zone. But this is something I feel like God called me to do. I feel like um, I felt isolated. I felt like this was a way that I could share the gospel and I could share his truths because I couldn't go and do the public speaking that he had called me to do. So he asked me to do this and I really love it. I really do. Um, I feel the Holy Spirit when I come in here and start talking. And so God bless you all. I love you all. Um, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, an awesome Monday tomorrow. And uh, much, <laughs> I'm not very good at this, <sighs> much love, hearts, much love, and cyber hugs, and good night.